making short animation clips and realized that I needed to make the sound effects and the backing tracks for those animation clips. So I started doing that stuff and, and getting into a bit of basic, basic music production and I was going out to clubs on the weekend. Yeah. So it was a timing thing of my hobby of going out on the weekends and enjoying that, that type of music, enjoying dance music and trance even back then um, and, being able, and learning how to do that. So at first it was just making music and then I realized I, I wanted to perform the music. So I started as a live act actually with a, with a friend of mine called Michael Simpson. We started a group together called Liquid M. That sort of led into learning how to DJ as well. So it was like an evolutionary process from produ producing, performing live, and then DJ. Yeah, I worked jobs I really didn't like just to pay my rent um, and DJed on the weekends for you know, either free or for very little money because I loved it, because I really loved it. And, and I, I got home from work not, not liking my day job and I just work all night until four in the morning and then get up early to go to my regular job. I didn't go clubbing back then so I didn't know what a DJ in a club environment was. I honestly thought he played at 21st birthdays or 18th birthday parties. I had no idea. The really cool thing about Jeanette is that she's been with me from the start of my music career really, like very early on anyway. So we've been together about 11 years. So she's, watched, she's seen it grow gradually and she's supported, uh, you know, 100% from the start. And to now share in, in how far we've come together is, is really cool. And she ha has been a huge part of that, you know. He was playing at really good venues and I just didn't know and I went along and I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, I mean, he was cute. It got to a point where he was playing every week and I had nothing to do. So I just started to keep myself busy. I'd pick up the camera, I'd take photos, I'd offer to help the promoter by doing the guest list on the door or promoting the event, asking people to come, getting my friends to come, just trying to keep busy at, at his shows. My mum's always been super supportive and still is, and she's, she's been incredible, you know, she's supported me through everything and still does. But very early on in my career, she, she asked me, so Marlo, look, this is awesome what you're doing. I think it's great that you, you love what you do and you're making other people happy with your music but what are you going to do if this doesn't quite work out? Like, what, what's your plan B? Are you going to go to university? Are you going to learn a different skill? What, what's your plan B? And I remember very strongly looking her in the eyes and saying, Mum, my plan B is try plan A again. So my idea of success is actually happened a few years ago already when I could quit my day job, when I could do what I love to do. So everything from now on is just the cherry on top. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying the ride, but this isn't... Um, I'm not goal focused in that respect of, of reaching the top or being the most successful because I'm already as successful as I can get because I do what I love.
like to I'd like to get to a stage where I can do my own shows. Armin does it as well with Armin only shows above and beyond do it. Um, it'd be amazing. To get the support from someone like Armin Van Buren means that your music ex is exposed to so many people more than you could reach by yourself. So especially his radio show, State of Trance. So when your track's played on that, for, you, you've, you've got so much more reach than you're able to do by yourself. And then when he plays it in his live shows, to you know, he's playing every week to tens and tens of thousands of people in stadiums all around the world. So it gives your tracks massive exposure really quickly. So in that respect, it helps. But he only plays things he likes. If he doesn't like the track, he's not going to play it. And, and, you know, I've thanked him a million times, said, Armin, oh, thanks so much for all your support. And he goes, don't thank me, like, you made the track. So, but it does make a big difference when, when you get the support from someone like him. Hey, what's up? It's Armin Van Buren here, here to say a few words about my man, Marlo. He's done an incredible job over the past couple of years. Really seen him grow into a trans superstar, especially in his home country, Australia, but also in the rest of the world. Uh, really proud to work with him on Armada Recordings and Estate of Trance. And I've grown into a big fan of him, um, really playing all his tracks and maybe in the future who knows we'll do a track together that will be amazing my fans have been awesome they've, they've, they are indeed really supportive they'll make banners and they'll wear my t-shirt and um, they really do come to all the shows and they're there in the front row start to finish you know and it, it really does make a huge difference to, to feel that support and that love. You pop up from behind the decks before you go on, you, you haven't seen the crowd yet. And the first thing you usually see is just the, all the flags go up and the banners and the, you know, the, the Marlowe signs and whatever else. It's just, you feel so welcome and it's, it's mind blowing. It's amazing. I mean, it all starts in the studio where we're sitting together and I'll, I'll play the piano and she'll come up with a vocal. And it's that, it's that, from, it's that feeling of, it started so small, it's just an idea. There's nothing there, it's a blank screen. And then a few hours or a few days or sometimes a few weeks later, there's a song, there's a finished song that you made. For me, that's the, the art of creation. I, I'm, yeah, I love that. Seeing how passionate he is about the music and the way that he describes it and the way that he talks about the song, that then yeah, led to me being passionate about it and I love it now. I live it every day. It is addictive. <laughs> Give trans a chance. It's those chant-alongs that have been happening the last couple of years that are just crazy, like to Visions and Haunted especially, where the whole crowd just chants back the melody or the lyrics of, of your song to the point where you can just turn the, turn the music off on the fader and... not just that they sing back the songs, it's the passion that they have when they do it. I mean, at A State of Trance Sydney, there was a moment where he turned the music down and 17,000 people in that room were singing back Haunted. I was just backstage just like, is this even real? I love how far I've come with my music and everything else, but it's really important for me to feel that I'm not losing who I am and that I focus on the really important things in my life, um, which, you know, my wife, my dog, my friends, um, things that I enjoy to do with my free time as well. I think that our shared goal is just for Marlo to continue to be able to do what he loves to do. I think a big key moment for Marlo recently was the Stereosonic tour at the end of last year. I mean, he's you know, plays in Australia so much, but then at Stereosonic Sydney in particular, 
the stage was so full that we had to shut the doors and there was a long line of people outside that couldn't get in and that we weren't expecting that you know he's he's from there he, he plays in Sydney quite often so for that to happen was like whoa okay this is this is different it's it's changed so since then things have just gone so fast and we're trying to keep up but the the goal is always for him to just do what he loves to do. So as long as we're achieving that, then we're happy. Woo!